I'm super excited to be on admin chat. Our topic today is creating psychological safety in our teams. This will be a very interactive session. You are going to do different exercises. To get the most out of this session, please make sure to have a pen and paper, have your mobile phone on silence, and make sure to have only one page on your screen. So it will be fast-paced and very interactive session. Welcome again. Okay, let's start with the first question. Please write it on your laptop or in a piece of paper. Which team was the best team you were ever part of? And what are the characteristics of this best team? We have one minute to do this exercise. Please start doing it now. And I have a timer here on my left side. Please forgive me when I look at the left side. Let's start now, one minute for this exercise. I know this is such a smart group of participants, very diverse, from different countries, so please keep writing. Last 30 seconds. Great. It's, it's nice that you are thinking and writing. Please continue. Last 10 seconds. Okay, thanks for doing the first exercise. You deserve a round of applause. Great, so this was the first short exercise. Amy Edmondson once said, everyone is a knowledge worker because the best way to get almost any work done is driven by ideas. So let's take a look at the definition of psychological safety. Psychological safety is a work environment where employees feel free to express their questions, concerns, ideas, and mistakes. This is very important, let me repeat it. Psychological safety is a work environment where employees feel free to express their questions, concerns, ideas, and mistakes. Throughout the session, whenever I mention the phrase psychological safety, this is our understanding of it. Here is our agenda. There are three points in the session. First, learning the major components of psychological safety. We are going to do it. We are going to do a short exercise on that. Later, we are going to look at inspiring leaders who are successful at creating psychologically safe workplaces. And lastly, you are going to apply a mistakes approach to make your teams more psychologically safe. Little bit of information about myself. My name is Baha. Actually, Baha is my last name and everyone calls me Baha. I'm founder of Solution Folder. At Solution Folder, we imagine a world where organizations have a collaborative work culture. This is our vision. I'm founder of Solution Folder based in Berlin. So I provide learning experiences, keynote talks on the topics of psychological safety, resilience, agility and collaboration. I have done talks and sessions all around the world, from Singapore to Dubai, USA to Germany and Netherlands. Around 16 years ago, I got a scholarship from Fulbright and I did my master's in the US on the topic of conflict resolution. Then I started working at Facebook and was one of the first employees of Facebook in Europe. It was a great experience in terms of seeing how Facebook creates psychologically safe workplace. Around eight years ago, I came to Germany and I started working for a German tech company. I was working directly with the CEO and I was in charge of expanding sales in Latin America, Spain and India. Unfortunately, this German company does not exist anymore. It was acquired by Apple. So for the last five years, I have my own training and consulting company, Solution Folder. And recently, I also wrote a book called Playbook for Engaged Employees. This book is available for sale all around the world. So enough about me. The focus of the session is on you. Again, the first learning point here is major components of psychological safety. We are now going through pandemic, COVID-19, and what's the relationship between psychological safety and 
COVID. So let's take a look at one example here. A growing number of doctors and nurses say the pandemic is stretching our healthcare <clears throat> system to the brink of disaster. Our national correspondent Jerika Duncan has talked to healthcare workers on the front lines. Jerika, one doctor says he was actually fired for speaking up. Was like working in a war zone with limited resources. 40-year-old Dr. Arabia Millet is an emergency physician at two hospitals serving low-income communities in New York City. She says she took this video inside Brooklyn's Brookdale University Hospital Medical Center. A pediatric ER has been turned into a makeshift isolation room using plastic tape from the ceiling to the floor to help protect nurses and doctors from COVID-19. We're fighting for your lives, but we also fight fighting for our lives too. We are also scared. Some are so scared and so frustrated, they have taken to social media to vent. Dr. Ming Lin is an ER doctor who worked for a hospital outside of Seattle through a contractor. He says he was fired after sharing his concerns about healthcare worker safety on Facebook. His employer, physician contractor Team Health, said in a statement that it has not terminated Dr. Lin. A lot of us are intimidated from talking. A lot of us, uh, you know, choose to remain anonymous. It's because our voice is suppressed. Dr. Lin says we are intimidated from talking. Actually, this does not happen only in the health sector, but in different industries as well. It shows very clearly the lack of psychological safety. So let's take a look at major components of psychological safety. Here I'm going to share with you four components one by one and we are going to do one short exercise as well. The first one is sense of belonging. There is a lot of talk in the business world about diversity. Diverse ideas, diverse perspectives, diverse employees. It's crucial to have a diverse team but diversity on its own is not enough to have a high-performing team. We can have diverse employees, but this doesn't guarantee that we'll be a high-performing team. What we need is diversity plus inclusion. Then we can create a psychologically safe workplace and high-performing teams. So how can we create inclusion or sense of belonging? We as executive admins, office managers, we play a crucial role sometimes in managing projects. In certain parts of the project, once we involve other employees so that the employees, other members, can make their decision about the project, then the employees feel more included. Diversity plus inclusion, this is very crucial. The second aspect is about vulnerability. Marcos once said, be open about your mistakes so others feel safe to report their own. No one is perfect. We can make mistakes, learn from them, and improve. And once we accept our mistakes, our team members are more likely to report their own. Again, the idea here is accepting mistakes, learning from them, and improve. So here is one short exercise. Please write this on a piece of paper or on your laptop. What is one mistake you have done recently? And what have you learned from this mistake? We have around 40 seconds to do this exercise. Let's start now. What is one mistake you have done recently at work and what have you learned from it? Let's start now. Please forgive me when I look at the left side, I'm checking the time. I know this is such a special group of participants, I'm curious what you are writing. Thanks for doing this second exercise. You deserve another round of applause. Okay, let's continue to the third aspect of psychological safety. This is about trust and respect. Previously, I was working at one company 
And once I dared to ask a question to one manager, her response was, that's a stupid question. At that moment, I didn't know how to react. I felt powerless. Actually, he gives this reply not only to me, but to other employees as well. And I remember even once an employee goes to the office of this manager and she leaves crying. It was a work culture based on fear. What is even worse is that other employees started to imitate this behavior. That's a stupid question. This company was very successful. It's always number two in its area, but never number one. One of the reasons is the lack of psychological safety in the workplace. So the question is, how can we create trust and respect in our team? One of the ways to achieve this is deep listening. In many cases, when someone talks to us, we are busy thinking of our own stuff. I know how I'm going to reply to that person, or we think of our own worries, anxieties, our own thoughts. Deep listening. First, giving our full attention to people in front of us. Second, understanding their thoughts. Cognitive empathy. Third, emotional empathy. Understanding what the other person is feeling. So three aspects of deep listening giving our full attention to others. Second, cognitive empathy, understanding what they think. Third, emotional empathy, understanding what they feel, their emotions. Again, the biggest barrier to deep listening is ourselves, our internal voice. So here is your exercise today when you talk with your colleagues or with your loved ones. Try to do deep listening, give your full attention, understand what they think, and what they feel. Once they talk with you, try to notice these three. And the last aspect of psychological safety is constructive conflicts. There is confusion. Certain people think that psychological safety means saying yes to everything and trying to achieve consensus all the time. No, this is not psychological safety. Or certain people think psychological safety is all about arguing, discussing. This is not either psychological safety. Psychological safety is about constructive conflicts. You can think differently on a topic than me, and I listen to you. We discuss in a civilized manner. It's about free exchange of ideas. It's important for us in our work, once we manage projects, organize events, to create this area of psychological safety. This way, we can create the best events, manage the projects in the best possible way. Now let's take a look at one short survey. This is based on the work of Prof. Amy Edmondson from Harvard Business School. I'm going to show you seven statements, one statement after another, and we are going to have 30 seconds to rate each statement either as strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, or strongly agree. The idea here is to see to what extent our team is psychologically safe. In case you are the only person in the team, think of a project that you are doing with others. So let's start with the first one. Please rate this sentence. If you make a mistake on this team, it's often held against you. Please rate it as strongly disagree through strongly agree. We have 30 seconds for this. Please write this on a piece of paper on your laptop. Let's start now. Last 10 seconds. Okay, let's go to the second one. Members of this team are not able to bring up problems and tough issues. Please rate this. Either strongly disagree through strongly agree. Write it on a piece of paper or on your laptop. We have 30 seconds. Let's start now. Thanks for doing this exercise.
Okay, let's go to the third one. People on this team sometimes reject others for being different. Please read this statement, write it on a piece of paper or on your laptop. You have 30 seconds. Let's start now. The fourth one, it is not safe to take a risk on this team. Please rate this statement, write it on a piece of paper or on a laptop. We have 30 seconds for this, let's start now. Please keep writing. Well done. Fifth one. It is difficult to ask other members of this team for help. Please rate this. Again, write it on a piece of paper or in your laptop. Again, 30 seconds. Let's start. Six one members of this team would deliberately act in a way that undermines my efforts. Please write this statement again. 30 seconds and let's start now. We are almost coming to the end of this survey, so I appreciate your collaboration. Okay, the last one. Working with members of this team, my unique skills and talents are not valued and utilized. Please rate this statement again. Write it on a piece of paper or in your laptop. 30 seconds. Let's start. This is the last one. last seven seconds okay thanks for doing this exercise as well well done so here are a few insights about this short survey in case you rated each and every statement as strongly agree it means that your team is not psychologically safe at all it means that there is a lot of area for improvement. You can either talk with your team, do anonymous surveys, or even discuss with HR what can be done. The idea here is to understand the pain points of employees and come up with ways to improve psychological safety. In case you rated each and every statement as strongly disagree, it means your team is very psychologically safe. So congratulations on for that. And the idea is to keep to maintain this high level of psychological safety. Let's take a look at the relationship between psychological safety and standards. Here on the left side, you see low standards, high standards. On the right side, you see low psychological safety and high psychological safety. By low standards, we mean unambitious goals, not clear goals. High standards mean we have ambitious goals, we have clear goals. Low psychological safety, again, a workplace which is based on fear. And high psychological safety, again, a workplace where employees feel free to express their questions, concerns, ideas and mistakes. Let's start the first one. 
Low standards and low psychological safety. This is apathy zone. We do not have clear goals and the workplace has a very low level of psychological safety. We don't care much. Low standards and high psychological safety. Let's say low standards we have not clear goals and very high level of psychological safety. I know one place it's a government office in a developing country. So you go to this government office, you have a task to do and you wait in the line and the government officers, they drink their coffee, they read newspapers instead of attending um, the, the people. So you wait there and then once you go there, the public officers, they act very slowly. They do not have any clear goals. They do not have any accountability. They got the jobs because of their connections in the government. No one can fire them regardless of their performance. They can say whatever they want to their bosses, managers. They have a lot of psychological safety. They can express their ideas. No one can touch them. Very high level of psychological safety. They can express their concerns, questions, ideas, whatever. Very low standards. This is comfort zone. The third one is high standards. We have clear goals, we have ambitious goals, and we have low psychological safety. This is very typical in organizations and teams. In most cases, we are stuck in anxiety zone. The key factor here is how we can achieve high standards and high psychological safety. That is high performance zone. Let me share with you some great examples from leaders who are creating psychologically safe workplaces. The first example is from Ed Catmull. He's co-founder of Pixar. In this video, he talks about how he sees mistakes as learning opportunities. Let's listen to Ed Catmull. I talk about um, uh, failure and, and uh, mistakes. Um, and, and the reason they're important to me is that uh, a lot of people talk about failure nowadays, uh, but I think there's a, th a thing that a lot of people don't understand about it. Uh, because academically, Everybody in this room knows that the failures that we've made are part of our growth. Or that having gone through that, we become a better person for that. So there is that meaning of failure, which, which uh, is potent, is powerful, and we try to take advantage of it when we can, and recognize it. All right. The difficulty we've got, of course, is the other meaning of failure. And there are two parts to that meaning. One of them is the, the one we learn in school. That is, if you fail the class, it's because you screwed up, didn't apply yourself, or you were too dumb to get the material. All right. So we went through a lot of years where that is what failure meant. So that's deeply embedded in us. But even beyond that, when we read the paper every day, if a company or a politician makes a mistake, there are opponents who will use that mistake to bludgeon them. So there is an actual aura of danger around the concept of failure. So it takes extra care to make sure that when the mistakes happen, that it really is safe. That when we have things that go wrong, and they will go wrong, that it is, it is safe for those people to go through that that we don't go on the witch hunts, and that our postmortems, which I believe in, do not result in pointing the, the finger at the person. It's to separate out people from their ideas, but it's also to separate people out from the problems. And that if we can separate ourselves from those, then we can discuss them and make it safer for people. I love how he explains this concept. Make it safe to make mistakes. Later, we are going to see the mistake types. Another example is from Facebook. Here is a photo. You can see myself next to Mark Zuckerberg. It was taken in 2011, so 10 years ago, at the rooftop of Facebook headquarters in Europe, in Ireland, Dublin. As you know, I was one of the first employees of Facebook in Europe, and Mark Zuckerberg tries his best to create a psychologically safe workplace. Last year, a very high-level politician in the U.S. wrote a post on Facebook. So certain employees said, this is hate speech, we need to remove it. 
the company decided to keep the post up and running on the website. Later, a certain group of employees were so frustrated that they started protesting. Mark Zuckerberg and the top management asked for a meeting with these employees. And they listened to the employees to understand their concerns, anxieties, what they think and feel about this. The top management and Mark Zuckerberg listened to the employees. In the end, the company decided to keep the content up and running on the website. Again, Mark Zuckerberg is not a perfect leader, but he tries his best to create a psychologically safe workplace. The third example is from Italy. I'm going to take you to one of the world's best restaurants to listen how the star chef creates a psychologically safe workplace. Let's listen to Massimo. Understand that mistakes is human and that in a certain way is beautiful. So one day we were at the ready to serve the dessert. So taka that you know. Uh, he had uh, he prepared two lemon tart for the service. At the moment uh, the service is, was ready, he dropped one of the two and he broke one of the two on the counter. And Taka was like, as a good Japanese, he was ready to kill himself. I said, Taka, no, Taka is so beautiful. Don't you see? With the, you know, the, the Zabayon just made, uh, you know, was splash proper. And uh, so I said, look, Taka, look, look at this, look at this. This is just perfect. So what we did, we rebuilt the same situation in, the, in another plate with all the same elements that was on the top of the lemon tart. And uh, we rebuilt the same tart that, uh, that we dropped on another plate. And we create the same situation in the two plates that were ready to serve. So we just replaced the old lemon tart from the counter and uh, with all these different elements from south of Italy, the Zabayon uh, re replaced the Zabayon very quick and throw like that. I think that's the poetry of everyday life. You have to be ready to see things that others don't even imagine. Whenever I show this video to participants, participants love it. It shows very clearly how we can see mistakes as opportunities for innovation. This is incredible. So, so far we covered major components of psychological safety, sense of belonging, vulnerability, trust, respect, and constructive conflicts. Then we discovered inspiring leaders who are successful at creating psychological safety. Now we are going to the last part of the section where you are going to apply a mistakes approach to make your teams more psychologically safe. Please meet Amy Atmosen. She's a leading expert on the topic of psychological safety. She's a prof at Harvard Business School. And I'm going to share with you four mistake types and the right approaches to deal with them. The first two mistake types, I created them by the work of Amy Atmosen and the last two mistake types are created by Amy Atmosen. The first one, unacceptable mistakes. Let's say we work in a factory. We are given all the training, resources, information, support, hardware to put a safety helmet. And despite all this, we do not put a safety helmet and we suffer an injury. This is an unacceptable mistake. Or let's say we work in a bank. We have access to a large amount of data. We get this data and we sell this to a third party. Again, this is an unacceptable mistake. This is a gross misconduct. In such mistakes, we need to warn or sanction employees. Key insights here. We need to ensure that unacceptable mistakes do not happen. In case they happen, they should happen rarely. The second mistake type is improvable mistakes. Let's say we have a product or service which is not finished. We present this to customers to get their feedback so that we can improve the product. The idea here is to learn the shortcomings of the product or service to improve it. The third mistake type is complex mistakes. They are caused by unfamiliar factors in a known context. 
A typical example is a superstorm in New York in 1990s. There is a severe flooding at a New York metro station. In such cases, we need to analyze such mistakes in a systematic way to prevent them. And the fourth mistake type is intelligent mistakes. These are about new ways of entering into a territory. Breakthrough product or service. Let's say we create a breakthrough product or service, we launch it to the market. It's not as successful as we expect, but we learn from it and next time we improve it. The main insights here, first, do not automatically punish mistakes. Second, we need to ensure that unacceptable mistakes do not happen. In case they happen, they should happen rarely. Third, improvable, complex and intelligent mistakes. We need to allow them. And fourth, we need to celebrate only intelligent mistakes. So here is your exercise. Based on the information on the slide, what is one action item you can take at work? We have one minute for this. Let's start now. Based on the information on the slide, what is one action item you can take at work to improve psychological safety? Let's start. I'm lucky to present this session to you and thanks for doing the exercise. This was the last exercise. Thanks for doing it. Well done. Asra Teller, former CEO of Google X, once said, real failure is trying something, learning it doesn't work, and then continuing to do it anyway. This is what we covered in the session. Major components of psychological safety, sense of belonging, vulnerability, trust and respect, and constructive conflicts. Then we discovered inspiring leaders who are successful at creating psychological safety. And lastly, you applied a mistakes approach. Let's create psychological safety in our teams and make impact at work. Thanks for attending this session. If you want to learn more, you can get free resources on this website, solutionfolder.com slash get free resources PS so that you can learn more on the topic. In case you have questions or comments, please send me an email. I would love to hear from you.